Hello. Hello, hello, hello. This is live. I don't know. I, I'm using StreamYard for the first time, so I'm not really sure what the hell, hell I'm doing. Um, you see my new backdrop? Huh? I got footballs back there. I got helmets back there. But I wanted to talk about my top 50 quarterback list. I'll do a podcast for each of these individually um, just because they're fun and talk about what the most controversial portion of this was. Um, as you can see on the screen, hopefully, I'm, I'm just learning how to do this, uh, but I put out my top 50 quarterback list for next season, I don't know, maybe three weeks ago, and it blew up. It, 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 you know, A lot of people hated it. A lot of people hated it, and more people hated it. Nobody really liked it, but nobody likes anything on the internet, on social media. And, you know, we could start at the top or we could start at the bottom here. Um, I'm not sure if you can see. Let me see if I can stop this banner. Let's hide the banner. Look at that. So Tyler Buckner at 50, Jeff Sims at 49. Nobody was really upset about that much. Although Buckner, some Notre Dame fans said it should be top 20, whatever. You know, prove it to me first. And then Jeff Sims, I just don't know. He's had a good freshman year, but... I just don't know if he's got the weapons with Jameer Gibbs gone. Bo Nix at 48 was interesting because he might not even win the starting job, but the people said if he did win the starting job, he should be much higher. But we'll see if he wins the starting job. I kind of did the same thing with Haynes King, just guessing. Could be Max Johnson there. So we really don't know about those guys. Uh, and whoever the starter is, you know, if it's if it's Max Johnson, uh, if it's uh, Tyler Thompson, those guys could move way up. Jerry Bohannon at 47, I like. Seth Hennigan, a lot of people felt was too low. Tanner Morgan has regressed um, since he looked really good a couple years ago. He checks in at 44. Logan Bonner, nobody knows about it. Utah State, I mean, real fans do. Jordan Travis, a lot of people felt was low. I don't. I, I don't know if he's an you know, established passer in my book. Sean Clifford at 41. Could have a big year. Listen, he's got weapons. There are weapons uh, at Penn State. You may not believe it, but there are. And he could have a bigger year than many people project. Uh, Jake Hayner was way too low, according to many people. Of course, everybody wants 50 quarterbacks stuffed in the top 20, which is impossible. But people thought that he was too low. Uh, and he could have put up monster numbers, absolutely. Tanner Mordecai, people thought was too low. Spencer Sanders is probably too low. He had a couple of games last season. And I watched him, and I was like, oh, this is not good. But Overall, the season was solid. Adrian Martinez at Kansas State is extremely interesting. Cade McNamara may not win that job, but Martinez has more talent around him than he did at Nebraska, but you'll notice at 25, Casey Thompson checking in at Nebraska, who is a better quarterback than Adrian Martinez. Coming over from Texas, a lot of transfers on here too, as you'll notice. Um, McNamara and J.J. McCarthy, we'll see who wins the job, and they could certainly move up. Keaton Slovis at Pitt, people said, oh my gosh, he's going to put up Kenny Pickett numbers. He's not. 35 is good for him. Jaron Hall's probably low. He's a potential first rounder, although I don't see that uh, at BYU. Uh, but probably 34 is a little low. Bachmeyer, Frank Harris, UTSA, I love. He's probably going to be higher on this list by the end of the season. Italia Tagovailoa. People were complaining. You know, they got Demas back, hopefully healthy. Jarrett, Jacob Copeland, they got a really good wide receiver crew there. He could put up bigger numbers. 31, though, I thought was pretty good. Peyton Thorne at 30. Everybody was upset about Michigan State fans were upset about that because how could he be behind DJ Uangalele and Quinn Ewers? DJ stunk last year, and Quinn Ewers hasn't played. But Peyton Thorne is a game manager, put up good numbers last year. I think those numbers could regress slightly without Kenneth Walker carrying that offense, but we'll see. They got two great running back transfers coming in, so you never know. Um... I don't even know if anybody's out there. This is supposed to be striving live to YouTube as well. And I don't have a lot of YouTube followers. Uh, Blake Shapin winning the job at Baylor. So he's ahead of Jerry Bohannon, 47, who transferred out. He was at 27. I get it. His arm talent is just so rare. I had to put him in here. Trevor Lawrence, as an example, his freshman season before he took a snap would have been in that range as well. Has a chance to move up. He's not Trevor Lawrence. Trevor Lawrence is better. But... He belongs on this list. Now, he may not win the job. Hudson Card may win the job. And if Hudson Card wins the job, then we've got ourselves a, a new list. And this list will be redone once the depth charts are out for week one. Anthony Richardson, Florida. A lot of people felt he was too low, but he didn't put up numbers last year, didn't stay healthy last year. Um, so I really don't know what to tell you about that. Uh, he's 
uh, phenomenal talent, great ceiling. The only reason he's at 26 is because of that ceiling. He should be off this list based on his numbers last year, but ceiling wise, you could make a case for him being top 10. So that's interesting. I mentioned Casey Thompson. Jackson Dart hasn't won the job yet either. I think he will. I think the struggles in the spring were just, just you know, adjustment. But if he doesn't, obviously he's going to drop. Cameron Ward at Washington State, a transfer nobody really knows about. He's going to put up monster numbers there. DTR at 22. Malik Cunningham at 21. DTR is okay where he is. Malik Cunningham, a lot of people thought should be higher. A lot of people thought Stetson Bennett should be higher too because he won a national championship last year. But I feel comfortable with him at number 20. O'Connell at Purdue. Uh, lost some weapons, but should put up good numbers. He's at 19. Clayton Toon, I love it. Houston. Will Rogers is going to put up monster numbers. Of course, we all know that. Spencer Rattler at 16 is intriguing. Going to the SEC. Tanner McKee, potential first rounder. I like him at 15. Dylan Gabriel and his, you know, UCF days or injured days. We don't know. But 14, another transfer there. I think he has weapons. Grayson McCall, I love. He's number 13, going to put up numbers in Coast Carolina. Phil Dracovic, back. Back from injury, I've got him as a potential first-rounder. K.J. Jefferson should continue his progress, put up good numbers as well. But there was some debate between Hendon Hooker and K.J. Jefferson. Hendon Hooker's better. Um, Brennan Armstrong, crazy numbers. The lefty of Virginia has crazy depth at wide receiver, too. He could end up being much higher than this, but he had to be in the top 10. Cam rising at Utah. Sam Hartman at Wake Forest. Experienced guys who had good seasons last year. Rising, of course coming over from Oklahoma, winning the job last season. Tyler Van Dyke at number seven. Will Levis at six was probably the most controversial because he didn't put up great numbers last year, but his arm talent is in the Quinn Ewers category, and he played last year, so I had to put him at six. Hooker at five, Devin Leary at four. There's a debate between those. There was a debate between Devin Leary and Sam Hartman. Caleb Williams, three. C.J. Stroud, Bryce Young, flip a coin as to one and two. So I found this interesting. I'm going to make this quick. I'm not going to go on and on for 30 minutes about this stuff, but I found it interesting. It was difficult to put together. It's difficult to rank these guys. I could have had certain players uh, that are outside the top 30, inside the top 20, and certainly a Will Levis. You could make a case for him being outside the top 25. So a lot of controversy with lists like this. They're fun for me. I've done running backs and wide receivers as well, so I'll do separate podcasts on those also. But here's your quick one on the Feral 50 quarterbacks. So drop your comments, like my page, subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's free. Uh, this will be on the Believe Network. So listen to it there or watch it there, whatever you want to do. If I can figure out any of this, I, I haven't used StreamYard yet. So when I hit end, end broadcast, I got to figure out how to put this into an audio file. Put this into a video file. I have to upload them to those platforms. I don't know a lot of stuff. I'm sure I can figure it out. I'm not a moron, but it, it is a little bit difficult for me. So could take some time. If this was live to anybody, if you're one of the one or two people out there that, that this came live to on my YouTube channel, hello. Uh, it's 123 on Wednesday, and I got a 